Hey, and welcome back to another video. So this is just a quick video um, that some of my subscribers had requested. Uh, what are your favorite phones of all time? Now, I have a lot of favorite phones um, and the list is a bit too vast to put into one video. I'll be doing a categorized video in the coming few weeks where I tell you what my favorite phone is under a certain category. For example, photography, display, battery performance, design, stuff like that. Um, that video is for another time, but this video is in general my top 10 favorite phones. Now, you may see only nine phones here and that the reason is uh, the 10th phone I don't have on me right now. I do own one, but I don't have it on me right now. So these 10 phones are my favorite phones of all time and I'll be just explaining each uh, one of them and telling you why I like them um, and uh, just a bit of details as well. We have a varying bunch of brands here uh, and generally, Mostly it's going to be Motorola, Apple, Nokia and Sony Ericsson. The Sony Ericsson one is the one that's not here, um, but this is what it's going to be. Uh, before we jump right in, as always, please don't forget to hit that like button as it helps this video out a lot uh, to get onto YouTube's algorithm. Also, uh, please consider hitting that subscribe button uh, if you already haven't and also check out my social media down in the description below. And now let's jump right into this video. So firstly, to point out, uh, none of these phones are in a descending or ascending order. I like them all equally um, and I really can't differentiate from which I like more because I like them all equally. So just to uh, point that out. So let's jump to the first phone, which is on this list. And it is the Motorola uh, Atrix from 2011. Now the Motorola Atrix from 2011 is an amazing phone. I've already done a full retro review on this phone. You can find it up here. Uh, this was basically the world's first phone that kicked off the power struggle between all phone manufacturers because Motorola branded it as the world's most powerful phone. Then Samsung was like, hey, we can do better. And they released the Galaxy S2 and all that stuff. It basically kicked off the power struggle to make the world's most powerful phone because it was the world's most powerful phone for a short time back in 2011. It's also the world's second phone with a dual core processor, the NVIDIA Tegra 2, right after the LG Optimus 2X. And it's also the world's first phone with one gig of RAM. And it had a functional, a properly functional fingerprint scanner uh, way before the iPhone 5S did. Uh, it's not the first phone on earth with a fingerprint scanner. However, um, it did have a very good fingerprint scanner. The camera was also very decent on this phone. Um, it could be uh, further extended. Its functionality could be further extended with its myriad of dock accessories. And I mention all of that in that full retro review video, uh, which you can find uh, up on my channel. And um, it was basically a uh, very, very capable phone. And even after the Galaxy S2 was released, it still competed in terms of uh, expandability and dock accessories and stuff. Got an HDMI port. It's got a lot of things going for it. Uh, one of my favorite phones easily of all time. Um, so this was the Motorola Atrix from 2011. Uh, easily one of my most favorite phones. So moving on to the next phone, we have the Motorola Droid X from 2010. Now I've also done a full retro review on this, which you can find as usual up in the card above. This phone, it's not the first to do anything or anything like that. However, it's design uh, drew me to it for some reason. I remember back in 2010 when I was not in the US, um, this phone was released and I really wanted it. Uh, it's designed for some reason just gets to me. It's got the red accented button over there. Um, it's, that, it's got that creepy eye when it turns on and a lot of these phones are dead on battery so I can't turn them on, uh, but they all do work. Uh, this one's got that creepy eye when it turns on. It says Droid in a very creepy way. Uh, Verizon, the entire Verizon Droid lineup had that. It also has a HDMI port. Um, it just feels really strange and different. And it, it looks, I don't know what the word is for it. I'd say industrial, but not really industrial either. I just really like what this phone looks, it, how it looks. Um, it looks creepy. Um, it, a lot of people have said this phone is quite creepy and its design just draws me to it. And if you watch the uh, retro review, you'll also see that it has an amazing camera. Um, also, this is my favorite Android phone of all time, period. Uh, I know I said I like the Atrix as well, but period, 
This is my uh, all-time favorite Android phone of all time. So that is the Motorola Droid X from 2010. Up next, we have the iPhone 2G, the OG iPhone from 2007. Um, now there are many reasons as to why I like this phone and I'll be doing a follow-up video to this with a categorized listing of uh, different phones because my uh, liking, my favorite phones goes way beyond this. This is just the top 10, but there's so many categories that I can break it down into. Uh, favorite uh, phone that revolu revolutionized design, then favorite most powerful phone, favorite phone with uh, unusual features. So I'll be uploading that video pretty soon. So stay tuned for that in a couple of weeks. Uh, but we have the iPhone 2G here from 2007. There are so many reasons as to why I like this phone. It revolutionized uh, mobile phone software with apps and all that stuff. The interface uh, was something new and different, uh, a fresh uh, option to Android, because Android, no, Android wasn't released at the time, but it was a fresh uh, option coming compared to Symbian and all the other minor OSs that were out at the time. Uh, it got rid of the keyboard and uh, popularized the on-screen keyboard. Software was the best at the time. Apple marketed it really well. It was just overall uh, a huge game changer in the mobile. F it Well, it is the game changer. You may ha hate Apple, but you must agree that if not for the iPhone 2G, there would not be uh, modern phones the way we know it at least, or if it would have been delayed a bit more. So if Apple didn't do this in 2007, the way we see modern phones, it could have been delayed a bit. I wouldn't say it wouldn't have never come around, but it would have been delayed a bit. So kudos to Apple on that. Whether you hate them or not, uh, without the original iPhone, the mobile phone market wouldn't have been the same uh, if it was not released. So. The iPhone 2G, easily one of my favorites of all time. Next up, we have a all-time favorite that a lot of people love, is the iPhone 4. Now, this is just pure design. Now, in my uh, I iPhone 12 Pro Max uh, review video, which you can find uh, on my um, on my channel, I mentioned the iPhone 4's design in that uh, review video as well. And I also did a 10-year uh, anniversary video to the iPhone 4, which you can find up here. Um, it's a good video. I made it really well. It took a while for me to make it as well. So if you like that, you can go check it out. Uh, the iPhone 4 is uh, easily one of the biggest game changers in terms of phone design and phone construction. Because now, don't get me wrong, Nokia, and we'll, we'll be talking about one of those phones soon, Nokia made excellently built phones before Apple. Uh, Nokia's design, they used metal, even Motorola with the razor, they used aluminum and stuff. Uh, so Apple was not the only one that just made better built phones. Nokia and Motorola made good phones in terms of design, but the iPhone 4 is what, you know, kicked off the uh, the design wars between mobile phones. And even today, as you can see, this design holds up really, really well. Um, the iPhone 12 Pro Max that's just sitting over, uh, sitting over here, this thing shares so many similarities to the iPhone 4 in many ways. It's still a design that holds up really well here in 2021. And it's basically a phone that started basically kicked off the design race to make the most good looking phone. Sorry about that, my phone cut out, it ran out of space. Uh, so basically what I was gonna say was the iPhone 4 popularized the use of glass and metal on a wide scale on mobile phones and was definitely the biggest changing factor in mobile phone design ever uh, when it was released in 2010. Also the iPhone 4 is easily my most favorite iPhone of all time period. So this was the iPhone 4 from 2010. Big thumbs up to Apple for this phone. Uh, easily one of my most favorite phones ever and my most favorite iPhone ever. Next, we have the Nokia Lumia 1520 from 2013 and 2014. It was released around December of 2013 and in some countries, uh, January of 2014. Uh, my favorite Windows phone of all time. Uh, I know there are better Windows phones like the, uh, the 1020 and the 950XL and stuff like that. And I also own those phones as you've seen on my channel, but still for some reason the 1520 size and it's, it's just sheer magnitude makes me like it. It's a huge phone. Now, this thing's battery's dead, but if I turn it on, and you've seen my other videos if you're a subscriber on here, and there, by the way, the, there, there's a myriad of videos which you can find up on my channel uh, for the Lumia 1520. Um, 
you should you will see how huge this phone is i know there are bigger phones like the xperia uh z ultra and stuff but this phone just feels massive even when kept close to an iphone 12 pro max um i really love it for its size and like basically it's a design it's sleek the black one looks nice the green one also looks really nice though i don't have one i have only two black ones um but i really like the design job they did with this phone uh the nokia lumia 1520 um the camera is also amazing i've done a iphone 12 pro max versus lumia 1520 video uh, camera comparison you can find that also on my channel uh feel solid in the hand had Probably the best battery life of any phone back uh, on its day. It had a huge battery. Uh, also a collector's item, somewhat of a collector's item now. And uh, just an overall amazing phone. So you can go check out all the other videos I've done on this phone on my channel now. So that was the Nokia Lumia 1520 from 2013. Up next is the Nokia 808 Pure View. Now this phone is an amazing phone in so many ways, but mainly uh, in terms of camera performance. And this is easily uh, one of my favorite phones that uh, revolutionized camera performance and basically promoting larger uh, megapixel sizes on phones. Uh, and it's generally uh, one of the, easily one of the best uh, Nokia camera phones ever released and one of the top revolutionizers of mobile phone photography. Uh, this thing was released in 2012 and is a highly sought after collector's item. I paid $200 for mine and it came from the UK. Um, it's just an overall amazing phone. It takes such great photos and I've done a, I've also done a photo comparison between the 808 Pure View and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Again, on my channel, you can look it up. Um, OLED display, good stuff, amazing stuff. Um, fe feels great in the hand and this, a lot of people say the bump is annoying, but I actually like it. Uh, Xenon flash, Carl Zeiss optics, 41 megapixel sensor. Uh, I know the successor to this, uh, the 1020 is better in terms of photography, but this phone does take slightly better photos in certain lighting conditions. If you watch my uh, videos on those, you will know. Uh, so I really like this phone and I will include this in my uh, follow-up video like I mentioned earlier as well because this is uh, my favorite phone that revolutionized camera for basically photography in mobile phones. And the other phone on this list that's missing from this lot also uh, is there for that certain reason. So the Nokia 808 Pure View from 2012, easily one of my favorite phones. So next we have our oldest contender on this list. Now this phone is from 2003. So it's almost 18 years old, 18 or 19 years old. And this is the Gen 1 Nokia N-Gage. Now you must be like, that thing was a failure. Why do you like that thing? Oh, trust me, if you do not know Nokia culture, you will not know that this thing has a cult following. There's an entire subreddit, a Discord server, so many things dedicated to the Nokia N-Gage. This phone at its launch, it was a failure. It didn't sell that well. But oh boy, oh boy, this thing has come a long way. There's so much of a cult following behind this phone. Um, they are really expensive if you want one. They're highly sought after collector's item. I have three of them. Two of them work, this one and the one with the box. And there's one that's throwing a slight fit as well, which reminds me I should fix that thing. Um, but this thing overall is uh, just ama an amazing phone that basically was the world's first dedicated gaming phone. Now, what do I mean dedicated gaming phone? Now, you can play games on all of your phones, but this thing is what uh, was a dedicated phone, meaning it had joysticks and control pads and all these buttons made in a certain way because it was focused on gaming. Uh, the last true dedicated gaming phone was the Xperia Play, and the first was the Nokia N-Gage. So they are a few, about 10 years, 12 years apart. Um, and this thing uh, was initially meant to be a competitor to the Nintendo Game Boy. It had a lot of exclusive games, which are probably more expensive than the phone. Uh, finding those games now is really hard. And there are a lot of prototype games that were not released. Those sell for big amounts online. Uh, this one I got for about $40. Well, no, it was a $24, $24 or something. The broken one was 32 and my fully working one with its box and its accessories was 130, which is also a good deal considering one with its box and accessories go for easily over $200. So, so many good things about the Nokia N-Gage, a revolutionary phone that was somewhat ignored at launch, but now it has a huge cult following. 
and I also got to point out that the Engage is easily my most favorite awkward phone of all time uh, because of, of its obviously strange design. Uh, really weird taco design it was known as the taco, the taco phone, uh, used a memory card game system and uh, it just overall it's a really interesting phone. I mean, just look at it. Uh, there's a, there are more taco phones, the uh, 3300, the 3300B, uh, 5510, etc., etc. But this is my favorite out of the lot. Out of the lot, uh, Nokia Engage uh, first generation from 2003. All right, now moving on to the second before the last, and this is a phone that not many people consider as their favorite phones, but I do. This is basically the business brother to the Nokia N8. This is the Nokia E7 from 2010. Uh, it's got a few similarities to the N8, but it's a bit bigger. It has a slide out keyboard with a upwards mechanism like that. The camera is way inferior to the N8's camera, but uh, it has other features that the N8 doesn't have, including a bigger display. This phone is the uh, epitome of Nokia design. This You should hold one to believe it because this thing is built so well like honestly, this thing feels, this is the definition of premium. There is no modern phone that actually feels like this. I mean, the 12 Pro Max does feel like this, uh, the iPhone 11, the 12 Pro Max, et cetera, et cetera. But with re respect to its age, this phone is built so well. The slider mechanism feels solid. It feels amazing. It's not cheap. Uh, it is not cheap. If you have a look in there, it's all metal. So it's a metal slider mechanism. Uh, Overall feels solid in the hand. Uh, the E-Series obviously was a business phone lineup. Um, and overall, uh, it's great. This phone is just great. It's a design. It's just so much to talk about it that I really can't put into this video. I'm planning to do a bigger video for this, a full uh, scale video for the Nokia E7. This has a few software problems that I have to sort out first, but when I do, I will release that video. Uh, the camera on this thing is uh, cr pretty crappy compared to the N8. But again, this is a business phone. It was not meant for uh, leisure. If you wanted, wanted leisure, you should have gone for the N8. But the Nokia E7, easily one of my favorite phones of all time. And also my favorite slider phone of all time. And uh, easily one of uh, my favorite Nokia phones of all time. It's really hard to put a pin on what's my favorite Nokia phone of all time. But I'd say in general, it's the E7-ish. I mean, that one also, but we'll, I'd say it's the E7. It's very hard. Nokia made such a bunch of great phones. It's really hard to put a finger on it. Anyway, the Nokia E7 from 2010, another one of my favorite phones. And here we have the uh, Nokia 5700 Express Music from 2007. Now there's so much to talk about this phone and I've already spoken a lot about this phone in this video up here, my retro style uh, vintage tech showcase review of this phone. Uh, an amazing phone when I got my hands on this thing. And by the way, this phone is very, very rare and very, very expensive. Mine's not in the greatest condition. I have to restore this one, but um, so many great things to say about this phone. I've done it all in that video if you wanna go check it out. And I also made up a, made a follow-up video you'll see on my channel as well. Uh, Nokia should definitely consider remaking this phone in 2020 or 2021 or 2021 or 2022, because they recently made the, uh, the Nokia 6130, which is a legendary phone. Um, this thing has so much potential for functionality because it can rotate its bottom with the camera to face backwards. The camera can also face sideways, get a video call with this thing with it facing you. And it can be turned into a fully music player as well with its stereo speaker setup, uh, where's it? here and here, dual stereo speakers. Uh, it's a Express Music phone. So obviously it has stereo speakers. Just an amazing phone. I, I totally uh, would tell Nokia to make this phone here in 2021 or 2022 uh, because of this rotating mechanism that uh, uh, basically could be used in any way uh, that the obviously the uh, user wants. If you wanna use it as a music player, sure, you're, you're set. Video call, sure. Side camera, sure. Backwards camera, sure. Amazing phone overall. I just, there's so much to say about this phone. And like I said, I've already done a video on it. So you can go check that video out. Um, easily my favorite weird Nokia phone of all time or one with quirky features. Uh, the Nokia 5700 Express Music from 2007. 
And now, finally, for the phone that we do not have here, uh, because it's back home at my house and I'm here in college, uh, it is the Sony Ericsson Satio I do. Now, that's pronounced I do. It's what it was just stylized in I D O U, but that's how it's pronounced. It's pronounced I do. Uh, the Sony Ericsson Satio I do from 2009. Now this phone runs uh, Symbian 9.4 series 60, re release number five. Uh, this phone has so many great things about it. Uh, I used to have one of these things, I still do. Uh, it's back home somewhere in a box, but I have another one waiting for me at home, which I haven't seen, which I shipped from Croatia to my home uh, from eBay. Um, and I've not seen that phone yet. And that one is a fully functional phone that I've sent home. Uh, my one, I have not seen it in a couple of years. Even when I was back home, I put it away in a box somewhere and I couldn't find it. But I, as I remember, it still functions. And I actually got to get that phone out and get it working again. It's just, I remember the charger broke and I had no way to charge it. That's why I put it away back in 2014 or 15. Um, the charger on this thing was that annoying Sony Ericsson proprietary connector, uh, but it is what it was. This thing runs Symbian. It is the world's uh, first phone with a 12 megapixel camera uh, back in 2009. Now there's another contender for that title, the Samsung Pixon 12. Now here's where things get weird. The Pixon 12, uh, well, the, uh, the Sony Ericsson Sartio was announced before the Pixon 12. However, the Pixon 12 was released before the Sartio. Uh, so uh, they both kind of compete for that title, the world's first phone with a 12 megapixel camera. But overall, since the, the Sartio was announced first, I'd consider it as the first phone. But the Samsung Pixon 12 definitely is a contender up there for the world's first phone with a 12 megapixel camera easily. Also, if you have a Samsung Pixon 12, let me know down in the comments because that phone is extremely rare and I'd like to purchase it uh, if anyone is willing to sell one. I could not find any of those things online. I might get a third Sartio as well because uh, I really like this phone and I saw a few ones for cheap online. So I might have my original one, the one I sent home from Croatia and um, the uh, another one that I might buy. So I really, really like this phone. It's design, it's... Uh, the camera, it kind of looks like a uh, point and shoot camera. It's got that slider mechanism, really good stuff from Sony Ericsson back in the day um, when Sony Ericsson was a thing, ran Symbian, etc, etc. So that is the end to this video uh, of my favorite 10 phones of all time. Then again, remember uh, that I like all these phones equally. They are not categorized in any way. The categorized video will come very soon and that's going to be a bunch of phones, including some of these as well. So stay tuned uh, for that. Um, and uh, if you like this video, please leave a like on this video to show your support to this channel or a dislike and let me know down in the comment section why you disliked it. I'm just looking for honest feedback here and also check out my social media down in the description below. A big thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.